Hello, my name is Mohamed Wali and I work as a solutions architect at AWS. In this video, I will show you how to open an RDP connection into your Windows instance without publicly exposing the RDP port via a simple and secure browser-based method, thus reducing the attack surface using AWS Systems Manager Fleet Manager. With that being said, let's navigate to the AWS Management Console to see how we can do that in action. So in the EC2 console, I can see that I already have three Windows instances up and running, utilizing the Windows Server 22 AMI. So pretty much the latest Windows Server version up to this stage. And if I navigate to the security section, I can see that there, was, there is no inbound roles added in so far. So before moving further, there are a couple of prerequisites I would like to refer to. The first is to make sure that pretty much all the EC2 instances have the SSM agent installed and up to date. The second part that I'd like to refer to is to make sure that you have attached an IAM role to this EC2 instances that grants it enough permissions to invoke the SSM APIs. So if it navigates to this IAM role, it simply has an AWS managed policy called the Amazon SSM managed instance core which simply grants the EC2 instance enough permissions to have permissions over the AWS Systems Manager Server Score functionality. You can refer to our public documentation for more use cases and more examples that you can have a look at in order to utilize it to make it fit your use case. With that, we can go ahead and start to connect to our EC2 instances and there are a couple of ways to do so. The first is via the EC2 management console where you can select your instance and then click on connect. And from here you can specify RDB client and then choose connect using fleet manager. And last but not least, you can click on fleet manager remote desktop, which will just redirect you to the fleet manager console where you need to select your authentication type and from there you can log in. This is one way. The other way around is to just search for the systems manager where you can go to the fleet manager from there. So once you open the systems manager console, you will see that you have fleet manager under node management where you can see all of the Windows instances registered with SSM in your uh, AWS account and region. And from there you can connect to them. So for the time of the recording, you can connect for up to four nodes at the same time. So I can specify these three nodes and just go ahead and under node actions, I can select connect with remote desktop, which would just go ahead and open three windows for pretty much the three nodes. And from there, I can just specify that authentication type I would like to utilize and connect for every instance. So one I have for one, I have chosen user credential. For the other, I'm choosing key pair. And for the third, there is a single sign-on, which simply is available only if you are signed in uh, with, a, uh, with a single sign-on user, which I have done in this case. And you can click on connect. And from there, you would be able to log in to your uh, Windows instance. So there are some few notes I would like also to mention when it comes to working with IAM Identity Center or SSO, what we used to call SSO users. So remote desktop in this case will support uh, IAM Identity Center authentications for the nodes in the same AWS regions where you have enabled the IAM Identity Center. Another point you need to watch out for is um, remote desktop in this case will support IAM Identity Center usernames of up to 16 characters. And when a connection is authenticated using IAM Identity Center, remote desktop would go ahead and create a local Windows user in the instances local administrator group. And this user would persist after the remote connection has ended. Also, the remote desktop doesn't allow IAM Identity Center authentication for nodes that are Microsoft Active Directory domain controllers. And although remote desktop on the other side allows you to use IAM Identity Center authentication for nodes joined to an Active Directory domain, we do not really recommend doing so. 
So this authentication method grants administrative permissions to user, which might override more restrictive permissions granted by the domains. So with that, once you manage to log in and authenticate to any of these instances, as you see, you have different tabs for the different instances you have. So if you'd like to focus in any of them, you can just go ahead and select it. And you can also turn, on, turn it on full screen where you can just go ahead and play around and achieve any tasks you would like to do with it in this case. But when it comes to this kind of remote connection duration, by default, a remote connection uh, or a remote desktop connection would be disconnected after 60 minutes. As you see, we already have 58 minutes uh, remaining. And to prevent a connection from being disconnected, you can choose to renew a session from actions menu, where you can just select renew the session before it times out. And depends on how you are authenticating, it can prompt you to enter the password, for example, if you specified user credentials as an authentication type, or if you specified the key pair, you would be prompted to specify the key pair again. However, with single sign-on, it will just renew it for you right away since you are already signed into uh, this account. On the other side, a remote desktop connection might disconnect if it has been idle or uh, if your connection has been idle for more than 10 minutes. And by default, you can have a maximum of five active remote desktop connections at one time for the same AWS account and AWS region. However, you can request a service quota increase of up to 25 concurrent connections, which you can do so by searching for service quotas. And from there, you would be able to submit this kind of request by specifying the right AWS service by searching for systems manager. And from here we can select systems manager GUI connect and then specify concurrent remote desktop connection for which we can request a quota increase. And then you can specify the number as long as it's not more than uh, 25 connection. And then you can just click on request and after a few hours that the request would be fulfilled. So that's how easy it is to open an RDB connection into your Windows instances without publicly exposing the RDB port. I hope you found it informative and thank you for watching.